Hello everyone. Welcome to Structure Simplified. In today's scenario, the most searched content in the field of steel design and the type of content which does not have enough clarity is the PEB Varos design or in other words, pre-engineered building design. We are about to cover that gap and spread proper guidance to understand the basic necessities of pre-engineered building design. This series of videos, yes, you heard right. I am about to make a series of videos on this particular topic. And these videos are going to be a step-by-step -step guide or a roadmap for the design of simple pre-engineered Varos building. I intend to produce a content which would impart sufficient knowledge to the practicing professionals to prepare their own PEB design with confidence. Without further ado, let's get into the video. To design a pre-engineered building or any steel buildings, what are the prerequisites? We need to have the following basic building parameters and loading details to begin our work. Let's see one by one. First one is building dimensions. Obviously, we require length, width, height and roof slope of the building. Next, building width module. Width module is nothing but the type of frame. Say for example, the clear span or multi span. That means a clear span with interior columns, a mono slope or a multi gable. So we need to know what would be our width module. Then the building location. This piece of information is required to determine the wind and seismic effect on the building. Nextly, the sheeting condition. This is important to identify the building opening conditions in order to calculate the internal wind pressure coefficients. And secondly, this particular information plays a major role in determining the unsupported length of the column. We will see these things in detail in our subsequent videos. Next, we require base spacing of a building. Usually, this information will be provided by client based on their occupancy requirement. If not, if we are provided liberty to choose the desired base spacing that would yield an economic design. While choosing the base spacing, we need to be very careful because this particular information will directly impact the overall steel tonnage of a building. Then, the design code. That is based on which codal provision we are about to proceed with design. If these informations are available, then we are good to start our design process. For our practice, let us consider the following project data. The width of a building is 25 meter center to center and length of a building is 18 meter center to center. Height of a building is 7 meter, which is eave height. Then my roof slope is 1 in 10, that is 5.71 degrees and the width module is obviously the clear span, then building location, Pondicherry, which means the wind speed for this building would be 50 meter per second. And this particular location falls under the seismic zone too. And then the sheeting condition, the building is going to be with three meter brick wall and metal sheeting above that. Then the base spacing it is as per design. So this means that we have liberty to choose our desired spacing. Then finally, the design code, it is as per IS 800-2007. So at this stage, we have all our prerequisites to proceed with the design. And we need to make note of one important thing. The STAT model is a simplified assembly of centerline drawings. The very first thing we need to do in STAT is to create nodes. Before moving further, we need to understand one thing. Anyone with a decent modeling knowledge can create a model for the sake of creating one but there is always a right way of doing things. Working on these minor details differentiate a good designer from a typical one. With this note, let's first check one of a finished cross-section drawing of mine. If we monitor closely, the center line of the cross-section is not a straight line connecting the dots. It is actually moving up and down based on the profile of the section. If you are expecting to create the exact model, then you need to create the analysis model from these center lines but it is not possible to do so in this stage. So we will get to that point after finalizing our design sections. For now, let's keep these things in mind and then start our modeling. Moving on to star environment, like obviously the first node would be 0, 0, 0 and to determine the second node, we require the height of the column. The eave height of a column is seven meter. So, in order to determine the center line height, 
we are going to subtract the depth of the purlins and the assumed depth of the rafter at the knee portion. So the height would be 7 meter that is 7000 mm knee height minus 200 mm that is for the purlin and then 375. I am actually considering to use 750 mm deep rafter section at the knee portion. So half of it is 375. This will provide our column height and it is 6.425 meter. So our second node will be 0, 0,6.425, 0. Next, we need to fix the ridge position. Our total width is 25 meter. The ridge position will be at the center of it. So the X coordinate value is 12.5 obviously. To determine the Y coordinate, we need to know what would be the increase in height for 12.5 meter span and 1 in 10 slope. The height increase would be 1.25 into 1 by 10 which is equal to 1.25 meter. The column top is 6.425 and the ridge point is 1.25 meter above that. So the Y coordinate of the ridge point is 6.425 plus 1.25 which is equal to 7.675 and the Z coordinate is 0. Since the other half of a model is just a mirror of this one, let's first concentrate on completing this half. We are almost nearing to close our model. Now join these nodes to create a member section. Let's go from the bottom, joining the first node to the second and second to the third. Now comes the difficult part, splitting the rafter sections. The mere principle of pre-engineered building is to make use of the moment pattern and use appropriate depth of the sections to optimize the frame. And there is one more thing to consider. If we split the rafter based on the moment distribution, we will get different length of rafters and that might increase the wastage in the overall project. So what would we do? Whether we break the rafters based on the moment distribution or we do some other thing. In order to understand this, we need to look into the process of plate nesting. The PEB sections are actually fabricated from the plate sections. The plates will be available in different widths and length. First of all, let us concentrate on the width. The most common widths are 1000 and 1500. It is also available in other widths like 1250, 2000, but that might vary based on the vendor. The most standard widths are 1000 and 1500. And regarding the length of the plate, the standard lengths available in the market are 6 meter and 12 meter. So if we can split the rafters in the multiples of 3, then we could possibly reduce the lengthwise wastage in plates. I preferably would go with this method of splitting the rafter. Our actual rafter length is 12.5623 meter. Let me start splitting the rafter from the ridge in the multiples of 3. We are about to select the member and then by using insert node command, we are about to introduce node to the rafter. First 9.5623, then 6.5623 and finally 3.5623. With this we have finished our modeling for one side. Now we are about to mirror this along YZ plane from the ridge node. Next thing to do would be applying the support condition to the bottom nodes. I am planning to go with pin base to get an optimized design. Go to supports, select pin support and assign to the bottom nodes of the column. With this, our model is ready. The next thing would be assigning the trial sections and applying the loads on the model. And they are for the next video. If you have any doubts or questions regarding the modeling, please feel free to ask in the comment section. The more we ask, the more we learn. And please do subscribe to the channel and smash that notification bell to get updates on the next videos. With this said, it's bye from Parshit Jain, over and out.